Prepare for battle. They fall one by one. They oh. fall. Yes. One night claims another. I won't lie. One night I wasn't claims expected. another. Fear my presence. Thank you so much, Tsunami. Um, man, Trent, you saw some funny stuff in the background over there. Ah, oh, you yes. guys almost didn't get to see me. Uh, I was blurred out for a while, uh, but we're I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I'm Go so ahead. disappointed you guys just missed that dance. I mean, this is gonna be a real dance of Dota, but this guy was just dancing around his room, trying to get the camera to autofocus, like, and it was truly <laughs> glorious. I'm pretty sure it was just a reenactment of him playing Beat Saber. But either way, <laughs> the game has actually started. We're smoked up, Navi's running through here. Uh, but I think Shad is unlikely to walk up that ramp, so he should be okay. Yeah, we got it. They're, they're gonna... To that. That's some accurate pings there from Shad. He's like, we're right there. Yeah, I, I think if you've watched any of these games, you start to see this, like, natural trade-off that happens, and the carry just hides away. I mean, he's already taken freaking Feast, for goodness sake. Like, he's not going over there. Uh, and Roger runs into vision, as does General. They're going to drop down this ward already, uh, just blocking it out right at the very edge. So Shad might realize that this is going on. He thinks it's over here, but it's actually over in this area. So they'll get the D ward on that small camp, most likely. Yeah, he pinged that right away. He's just cutting all those trees just in case. Easy peasy. Uh, but yeah, so we get ourselves a Shadow Fiend and uh, I think the at least the second Night Stalker I've seen today. Uh, so a lot, lots of Night Stalker in the matches I'm, I'm getting to see. We've seen the mid. And now we're moving to the off lane for General. So General, already a guy who's been building very tanky items on pretty much whoever we see him play in the lane and just looking to uh, trade and fight and punish the enemy carry. And Night Stalker is a, a great hero at doing that when you just want to kind of lurk in the lane for a while. Yeah, totally. I, I think that the other thing that stands out to me here is like sort of a... I, I don't know, it feels like sort of a a classic match that we've seen before in the mid lane but one that sort of is different than it has been when both of these heroes were in their heyday uh with the shadow fiend going up against the puck here uh going raise first for boom he's gonna try and have a good time against iceberg uh playing on this puck and already three and one versus two and one I, i'll curious to see how this plays out in the new iterations of both these heroes yeah, the last time Puck was super popular, it was uh, a lot of it was the laning stage, right. uh, as well as just like the ridiculous amount of damage the hero got buffed with, and now it's back to like more normal levels. So uh, hero doesn't necessarily win quite as many matchups as hard. Should still go pretty well. Nice dodge. That's the kind of stuff that you really like to see in the matchup. I can uh, put it in the Puck's favor. That's for sure. Well, it's interesting, too, because in some matchups, you see this as, like, the Waning Rifts maxed out build or whatever. Um, you're just, like, multiple points, and then they hold off on phase shift, but against Shafin. Definitely makes sense. Uh, other lanes up top, haven't talked about a whole heck of a lot. The weird-looking Dark Willow uh, playing together with Toby and just the oppressive laningness that we see from a Slardar. Uh, if he gets out of this early stage pretty good, V2 might be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, it can, uh, I guess we kind of have the same story with both offlaners, right? Of like very uh, viable in terms of pressure and the carry. Should be a better job for the slider, as you said, just because that's uh, probably the best offlaner in the patch right now in regards to uh, actually hurting you in the laning stage. But uh, the rotations are a little bit better from the side of Navi, I would say, in terms of like the puck is a better opportunity to rotate down and make stuff happen compared to the Shadow Fiend. So uh, fairly even overall when we come to that like eight, nine, ten minute mark, I think. At least for now, there's some early aggression. Uh, we'll look forward to that later stage when the rotations do start to come. Uh, but there's already a good amount of pressure there from Always Want to Fly hitting level two and uh, throwing out that Maledict onto Toby, who's just going to solve up afterwards and then back away. Can they get this courier? It doesn't look like it. Karamis is just going to keep the pressure on there and keep on punching away at V2. And this looks like a standout player. I think he's been one of the guys that's really had some of the the highlight games for this Navi roster. I've uh, really been liking him mm -hmm. on the carry. Well, yeah, I think he's made uh, Life Sealer look like a carry that can carry a game uh, like very hard as a solo sort of guy, which I think is one of the more impressive things you can do on this patch. Because we've seen lots of Life Sealer games, but there's plenty of times where it ends up being this like four heroes and a Life Sealer, and the Life Sealer just can't really lift that big burden. But V Tune is someone who's uh, very capable at doing that, and uh, you would think that that should be even easier when he's here playing the Sven. Uh oh, going in mid. Dire structure. Iceberg are getting uh, very up close and personal, and they're even going to glyph the wave here as he's oh, waiting for his orb to come back up. Yeah, he wants to get in there with the waning rift. And, well, they're moving. Oh, that Sal was wasn't broken, so he got a little bit of extra heal off of that one. And now Roger in the mid lane as well with Celery. Uh, they're going to be able to force him back. Two points up in Scatter Blast, but they can't really go for the aggression. 
Interesting. Yeah, I thought he'd go for like a, a waning rift jump to ensure he'd get the uh, the right orb hit, but just wanted to use the orb for the escape, which fair enough. Mm -hmm. Make sure he's taking the least amount of damage. And he gets back to the town time to catch some creeps. So overall, things just sort of even here in the mid. Not a whole lot of difference. So it seems requiring some rotations, and uh, this should favor Shad. He would think on the life stealer, just because now there's no Io here to benefit the Night Stalker's trades. So your feast is going to be winning out in that regard. Too true. Iceberg, they're going to spot this regen rune up top, which is going to get picked up for him, uh, which is going to be a nice little boon. And in the meantime, uh, Celery will be able to rotate back down bottom while Isle shows up again. And we are all reset. Still no kills already at four and a half minutes. Uh, there's been a little bit of skirmishes here and there, but he's been able to strike it home. Yeah, you would think always want to fly might be the first to go down. Just a fairly vulnerable hero, especially with the, uh, the aggro build. Yeah, it would be on me. <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> but like, one root into a, a slider at level four is pretty scary. As Toby's just about there now. Well, he uh, does have those three points prepped up, and b -Tune making the move over. They're going to try and go onto him or secure this rune, or maybe they can get both. Goes into the Shadow Realm, and it's the rune. Still gets the right click off. That reveals, hey, there might be some vision up here, guys. Well, luckily it's uh, vanishing right now, so that's uh, kind of the wrong info that you want to get. Oh, he actually always wants to saw the dead ward, so nice. he knows that it expired. Okay. Convenient Dota feature. Not a bug, one just a feature. <laughs> Who knows what it was at first? That's right. <laughs> it exists now. We're past it. Yeah. Um, so first night time's coming around right now. A very slight lead for Viking. Uh, but general double bracer and trying to work towards this uh, completed phase boost. So he's going to catch this creep wave and try and put some pressure on. And a lot of damage on the celery. He's getting chased down. General gets hit by that open wounds to slow him down. And it looks like the snapfire will escape. It costs them so little to do that, too. Yeah. That really does. Ah, Boom gets lucky on the guess. We'll get the room this time, but the coil's out. Yeah, and the chase in comes. Roger's there as well, bringing in that nice stalker. They saw this rotation, and that's going to allow them to get the Roger kill. Can they get another turnaround here, though? It doesn't look like it. With always want to fly moving in, and I'm Celery sorry. making that rotation as well. It will take them both down. Big kills for Nobby. Yeah, it does give the first blood to uh, for Viking at the very least. So, somewhat even. Not really, uh, <laughs> but you know, at least he didn't get uh, two to one and they got the first blood. So uh, for now, Roger will return to the mid lane, bottle up Iceberg, and then just go right back to being a, a nuisance in the bottom lane together if they'd like. Uh, but it looks like stacks are on the mind of Roger right now, perhaps. Yeah, that's the kind always want to fly. Well, oh, yeah, they got a lot of stacks happening right now, Mr. Sven, huh? On the same oh, time oh doubles? Some too. Oh, yes Good. four camps that's, that's nice that's uh that's crazy that's gonna be a good injection Radiant of gold I, I wonder if they're gonna try and find him yeah already celery's coming up here to scout this out and see what they got working well it's interesting he's he scanned it. and and smoked too so right a bit costly but yeah he does get the block down Die. And I'll won't scan quite run into roger breaking that one so if they go for one more stack they will be able to interrupt it uh, should mention right now also Dyer has a, a decent sized stack on that hard camp up by the secret shop as well. Um, so they're going to have a little bit of injection of gold into Boom if they want to make that work. I kind of want to see what, what route Viking go with this because like we so often think of Viking as this team that just hits this incredibly hard timing. Uh, you know, where everything starts flowing, they start to like end the game around that 25 minute mark or so. Do, do you think yeah. this is a lineup that can do that? It definitely fits their play style because they're all about like the the flow chart Dota of just like following them the next logical move and they have a lot of that stuff in this draft. They have the uh, sort of like tower pusher and group up here on the Shadow Fiend slash Roaching hero with the help of the Slardar. So it, they just uh, are able to approach objectives, use big spells to try and win the fight, and then they they slow down for a second to get their key items. So like for now, I could see them grouping up to try and take the mid tier one. Then I'll see them slow down to try and get the blink dagger built up on Toby first before going for anything else too crazy. 
see. Like advancing to like the tier two stages in the Roche and everything. Right. Uh, and then they get their Roche, and then they buy their BKBs, and then they go tier twos in high ground. Right. And sometimes they'll wait for the Ages and the Cheese for the second, like, uh, high ground siege. And that's, uh, that, that's like flowchart Dota, right? Just like super simple, making sure that you're giving yourself advantages at every moment. Right, and that's maybe where you try and find, like, these moments to slow the game down with the general Night Stalker, right? Because it's sort of, when that nighttime comes around, it's a lot harder to make that move. Uh, you know, fighting into a Night Stalker. But the flip side of that, too, is how many times have we seen Night Stalkers that can see this, like, danger coming at them but just can't do anything about it because they're not strong enough yeah it can be a bit of a double-edged sword because although you're very strong at night there's also this very glaring window to your opponent saying like i suck right now yeah. if your ulti's on cooldown and it's daytime it's just like well you know this guy's not that great all right well again very even only one to two at this nine minute mark mask of madness done we got the first blink done as well Finished off for Iceberg. It's gonna be brought out to him now as they try and go down bottom and see if they can get this catch. It was a good cookie attempt. Only hits on the IO in general. He's able to do more than enough damage. That three points up in overcharge is devastating. Man, how much attack speed is this gonna be on Night Soccer? Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, you know a guy has a really good attack speed when his level 20 talent is plus 35 damage. <laughs> Yeah, that's insane. Like, what a garbage looking talent on so many other heroes this would be. Oh, with Chuck Jolty coming out, trying to take down Toby to get him. That's the relocate rotation over for it. Very nice pickup. And suddenly all five of Navi grouped together to uh, make that kill happen as the general is going to be brought down bottom again. Yeah, he's doing the, uh, I think the same build Seb did with the, the glove and everything too. Okay. I think Seb went for a pipe after in that game, but uh, not necessarily going to look that good in this one, I would think. No, it's not really what they're too worried about. I'm kind of interested to see, uh, like, when that group up happens, though, because as you mentioned, it's 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 their play style. Um, and, you know, Boom right now going for this BKB first. It, it feels like they're trying to get geared up to fight. That's the main area that they're going towards. And another stack of Ancients, another stack of camps all across the map, everywhere. Double over on those Ancients, really nice. This is uh, the worst situation to be in right now, though, if you're Viking, because they, they had the Blink queued up on the Slardar, like they were ready to kind of go and make their plays, and you have this urn done on the, uh, the Dark Willow, but then they realized that, like, they didn't feel strong enough with, like, the start Shad's head. They're just saying, hey, man, like, if you get a Blink right now, I don't really want to fight. I don't know if we're going to win these fights. So now he's gone back for the Hood first on Toby, which is going to further delay things. And all the while, you have a Sven with so many stacks happening. Uh, just farming up in the jungle, and the puck has gone for this aggressive item. So Iceberg is going to be looking top for this uh, gank attempt here. Shad, not much to infest here. That's going to look. Oh, that's the worst timing for that to happen for him. Oh yeah, that's a death. That is a rough one. And rage will not save you from maledict or the tip. No, damn dude. Big plays. Radiant structures. So that is uh, at least a tier one tower taken up top, uh, but at the same time, there's pressure onto this mid tier one and bottom simultaneously. This is this is a scary time right now for Viking. Etoon, can they get him? Is this their punish? Ah, Iceberg, relocate. <laughs> yeah, nope. They're gonna turn around. And they can fight me. Requiem comes out as the relocate came in. General, still thinking about going and always want to fly there. They find one. Well, the Terrorize comes out, only hits onto one of those heroes. Puck jumps in, they kill off Celery. And the relocate will pull out the IO as B-Tune. You get hit by that cursed crown. Can Viking make the work? Look at the IO jumps in, it's not enough for the save. Infest out of Aramis. And now the chase down coming. Viking, there's been a back and forth in this fight. A couple of different times, but they finally have gone a bit too far on Na'Vi. And Viking's yeah. on it. I'm surprised that went so well considering Toby just chased uh, Witch Doctor the whole time. <laughs> oh, Iceberg. Uh, that was definitely deserved, first off. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. That's what we call the clap back, I believe. Dyer's mm. middle tower has fallen. Yeah, Radiant's everybody did so attack. much damage in that fight for Viking. And an overextension uh, definitely is punished in a big way. <laughs> They say fine, Iceberg again. Oh my god, he can't die here, Iceberg. Don't give him this opportunity. Okay, no. 
Yeah, but like... think about the battle pass point, or like the uh, the DPC point things he's gonna get. Go to plus points. That's what the shards. I knew I'd think of the name. Shards. Ah, Obi, punch, punch. Always want to fly. He's gonna die. And Iceberg looks to escape. But yeah, they've taken over this area now, and Boom suddenly doing Boom things. Is uh, gonna have that BKB done. All I hear now when I look at this Night Soccer Midas is I've made a huge mistake. It's like, thanks for looking so good. My whole team's chilling, and then you buy Midas, and you're like, hmm, was this really the best item? I mean, yeah. they do need additional damage scaling, and the attack speed will help. And of course, this way he's gonna get more gold and more XP and try and be a force to be reckoned with. Uh, hmm. Tough call. I mean, the interesting thing about this is that it's still less than a thousand gold lead, right? There's been a lot of trades back and forth. Um, so, like, Navi are, are definitely not out of it by any stretch of the imagination, but it was looking really good for them, and now it's like a little bit awkward. They can really That's more even. Fight? Okay. Well, if they are, they're pretty well grouped here. Yeah, this is a little bit dangerous, I think. It's three heroes running in, and there's a lot of them, although that's a good silence onto all. Can they blow them up in time? Boom just pops the BKB. They were not expecting that one. And suddenly, Viking in a position to chase down. They're going to turn on to always want to fly again. This was the first BKB usage to save their lives, but they saved their lives and got one kill, and now going to run to Roche. Dude. Oh, well, you can't tip him after you don't kill the puck. Come on, guys. Save him. That's right. Oh. All right. Well, they're back on schedule. BKB leads right into the Rose Pit. This is also going to get them uh, pretty much farmed up to the Blink Dagger Gold very easily on Toby, since it's unlikely your opponents are going to want to force a fight into you while there's an Aegis and some pressure on Navi to maybe try and find a pickoff here. As uh, Sven will just be trying to farm up the, uh, the next big item, which... Hmm. What to do? Disassemble. Uh, Looks like the plan uh, for a BKB attack. and a, uh, an Orchid. That, that would be even more silence on Shad. I thought Shad might go Manta this game. Hmm. But I guess the, the only problem is you don't really want to go Manta versus the Night Soccer because it's kind of Radiant pointless. Are fortified. Maybe it wouldn't actually be a terrible BKB game at some point for Shad. It feels like you might need it, right? Versus the Orchid that's going to come out and then also Night Stalker. Like, it can be kind of annoying uh, playing into that silence. The, the life stealer. Middle tower of course, at the same fallen. time, you know, you don't really want to spend Radiant's too much on all that versus a, a Sven attack. when he is like right. no cares, right? That's true. Fair enough. Time will tell. We will see. Still very, very close. Uh, Boom pressuring up top with that Aegis still in hand. He's going in for that Dragon Lance, just trying to get the big stats build and just become this like Dyer's giant maelstrom of attack. death. It doesn't work as well in Dota, you know, when we have a Maelstrom. So whatever. But uh, I'll allow it. <laughs> it's a word, right? It is, yeah. You know what's weird is that it looks more like a, a, a Kunkka Torrent, the Maelstrom does, right? Isn't that kind of the Dyer's idea behind it? Is under attack. Oh, you mean like the water Dyer's thing, yeah. Yeah. Tower. Yes, yes, yes like a storm, yeah. Not not like the, the, the whatever it is. No, not like game. Thor's hammer. Well, that's Mjolnir, Mjolnir I guess, yeah. yeah. True. yeah we got a lot of issues happening with that word. <laughs> We got some serious. I mean, we got Zeus and Mars, so we we already got a lot of mix-ups happening in Dota. Right. Have you seen that Mars item that has the Medusa face on the shield too? I, yeah, we're we're all over it. Yeah, it's great. I like it. So next tier of items coming out now, and tier two tower taken free. 20 minutes, which means outpost is claimed for Viking. Oh, that's a good one. I do not know if Navi are going to be able to make the same thing happen of their own accord. Doesn't really feel like they have that fight readiness yet. Um, now they want Iceberg's uh, Aghanim Scepter on the puck. <laughs> that would be a pretty big boost up for them, considering that's like the whole main way Dyer's Boom wants to play these engagements. Good tether away there. They spot the smoke coming in and able to interrupt it. Wow, and look at it. They're going all the way in. Now that Presence Aura affects buildings for the Shadow Fiend. They can't fight them right now. Yeah. That's, uh, that's huge. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. in a uh, very awkward Dyer's spot item-wise. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. There it is, though. And now we're, we're ready to go. But uh, you've already lost your tier Dyer's two, unfortunately. There is killed. two minutes left here on this Radiant's Aegis. Bottom tower as Boom attack. bottles up the DD. 
Another moment that might not end too well for Navi if they decide to take this fight, but they're they're cutting ca uh, cutting waves and killing couriers. This general smacks down that snapfire one in the mid. Spotted on an obs as he flutters through though. Dude, they uh they're in a really good position right here. Like with that. They, they actually forces all the Yeah, general gonna try and run away here. Oh, oh he comes yeah. in though! They got him! I thought they were just gonna lead with the uh the Mortimer kisses, but Toby just blinks right in on top anyway, so. Dyer are scanning. So now, I mean, they've still got a minute and a half left on this Aegis. Boom, it's gonna straight walk forward and run. Get a couple quick punches there. Oh, the cookie in. There is no save. Come on, dude, rain drops. <laughs> I just wanna fly. Got a lot of value out of those. Yeah, yes. Jeez. Well, I, that, that's a little bit interesting to me that they ended up popping that in uh, the DD and then don't manage to really take another objective. I guess that they're just committed to this idea of like, we'll wait for the next series of items before we go high ground. They are super safe. There are so many teams that would have went and just like punched that tier three right there. I've been like, hey, we have a DD guys. This sounds good. But like, let's just do a little pros and cons list here. And the cons are going to heavily outweigh the pros in a situation like that. Maybe if it's the old patches where tier threes really did something, it might be worth going for. All right. But tier Radiant threes today are just scanning. pretty meh. Mm. And another scan. Radiant recognizing the danger coming their way. They back out. Shad able to retreat away from the danger as he tries to get towards that AC. They are underneath a ward over here, Celery and Toby. Um, it was a pretty well-placed one by Navi, but they can't get in on. They're at least going to be able to secure two bounty runes as uh, on the other side of the map, Aramis picks up one of them as well. But Tier 1 Tower is going to be pressured by Boom. And Viking continue to make some gains around the map while Navi... Uh, you know, they haven't hey, been man. able to get those same objectives. V-Tune's crushing these jungle creeps. <laughs> okay, Dyer's I'll tell you that much. <laughs> His numbers out of this world. 246. The jungle, they fear him. It's true. Yeah. It's a dangerous place. He's known as Sven Diablo. <laughs> okay. It's a terrifying Dyer's force that just I'll shreds fall. through. Yeah. Nighttime comes and he just cleaves through families of mud golems and hell bears. Sad. They come back afterwards, though, right? It's smaller. Oh, oh, curse. Silence BKB immediately. Terrorize comes out. The fear is there. Catches on to the Witch Doctor. Now Requiem. Afterwards, D2 pops the BKB, and now the beatdown comes. Can he chase down Boom enough to get missions? Cookie is out there with the sun and the chase down. Oh, but they jump in. They find the bash on the beat tune. Get shield back up by Roger. Turns back into this fight. Everybody relatively low. They need a couple shots from the cleave, but it's not looking like it's going to be enough. With the Night Stalker dead and the rest of Vikings streaming forward, B tune. Oh, nice stun. They get the stun off. They kill him off. They got Toby. Okay. Pack and Iceberg forward we trying go. to catch more. Yeah, he's out of uh, stuns though. No coil for the leash, and they even go forward, but Chad's out of there. Ow. Well, they got buybacks. Two of them. They did, yeah. That was pretty expensive uh, for Navi. Not uh, not really going to be worth it in the end, considering they still lost the tier one. But, uh, geez, that was uh, close to being a lot worse, that's for sure. When he, uh, when he made the jump past the tower on Toby there, they, they kind of caught the stun right, uh, right as he was going for the blink, so... Right. Like Landon got stunned almost instantly. I don't know how you're feeling about this game right now, but I, I feel like both of these teams are playing at a really high level. There's like these sort of very quick back and forth that are going on of teams trying to assess like how how well the fight's going and then like retreating and then suddenly a team slightly oversteps, then they're able to punish, but there aren't those like big catastrophic losses. You know what I mean a little bit? Yeah, I think um, I would say Vikings play just like a little bit better in terms of how much pickoff potential there is on the side of Navi and they're not able to really utilize it. Like they have Dream Coil, Night Stalker and Relocate. Okay. I would expect that more people will be getting uh, sniped off on the side of Viking. That's fair. And I, I think that, uh, you know, some of it is also just like you said, Viking playing that little bit better of catching wind of it with those scans hitting on the heroes as the rotations are coming in or whatever. Is the Dota chat wheel missing hero shows up? <laughs> Gotta love those. Uh, but yeah. Meanwhile, up top, General is gonna be the one found. He does get his BKB. It's uh, coming. Delivered, but I think it's gonna be a little bit too late. Yeah, speed burst won't save you there. Okay. 
take back over the outpost. And Roche possible to respawn in five seconds. We'll have to wait and see what the timing Radiant is on it. Are scanning. Are they trying to fight more? Whoa. Blink away by iceberg. Oh my god, it's a really quick Roche respawn. Oh, that's nice. That is very good for Viking. They go and check it right now. Dark Willow finds a Puck Illusion. Ah, it looks like they're not going to go check it. Uh, well, they might. If Boom walks into it right now, this would be huge. But I'm not sure. It's It was such a quick respawn that they might Radiant's not go and check. I tell you, if it's a DD, he'll check. <laughs> okay. No, Sleary's on it. Yeah. Now, they have the OBS, so they're going to see this movement there if it comes. Uh, and it's a regen in the bottom anyway. Hmm. Toby heads over here. Uh, oh, and they're going to smoke into the fight into Roche, I guess, is the call here. Yeah. Well, the courier's in there for the dire, but yeah, they're smoking around. They just killed that ward. Toby has the light two inside, finds the Night Stalker right at the start and super dead yet again. Find one more consolation kill afterwards onto Always Want to Fly, because why not? You can see the idea behind the Witch Doctor pick when they saw the Slider Life Sealer because, you know, you can, or this, you know, you can stop this, like, double jump in and everything, or just even the Slider coming in with multiple heroes, but it just does not work against Life Sealer in the Rage. It's just depressing. Damn, dude. That's a, that's a, that's a pretty big hit here. As Viking are playing it very, very clean. Uh, and they have this ward down by the uh, tier two tower as well. So they're going to try and make this rotation. And uh, they could push. maybe catch Iceberg down here too, because Toby's already gotten the dire side. Oh, looks like Boom's not moving up here anyway, so won't matter. They have such good vision over here. And this is still this 10, so 10 second BKB from the Night Stalker. Oh, they pop the smoke under the ward. Mm. Toby's just out of there. Bye. I'm out. I'm surprised he didn't loop around and try and pop it, but I'm probably just worried about getting uh, caught by the vision. Mm -hmm. Well, they're hey, you want to go pick up the surprise system. inside? Yeah. Okay, dire scan. Realize they're over there. <laughs> smoke is gonna wear off in just a little bit here. Yeah, and, and, like. I mean, it's so hard. Like, what's even the game plan here for Navi? Oh, God. Not getting caught. That's one of them. Hopefully, Iceberg blinks away in a second. Oh, my God. He's really low HP. And, oh, Morpher's Kiss is coming in. Get out of there. That, that's kind of a win. Yeah. Living. <laughs> Dyer's bottom tower. I'll take him where you can get him. This is, a, this is a very tough game right now. Uh, they're going to take back over this outpost, but their high ground is about to be assaulted. Yeah, there's just so much time left in this Aegis, too. Yeah. Cheese is there for Shad afterwards, and the slow siege coming from Boom, which actually isn't that slow. Uh, that tower is dropping. And there are a lot of heroes back now. From the of my you can just retreat again, and with that eight second BKB, there's nothing that's there for that like instant disable. He's always going to be able to have an, a reaction to it. Throws out the stun. Doesn't feel forced to pop it. And boom, going to wait for that next creep wave again. Yeah, it can be a bit hard. Uh, on that first stun like that, because you're not sure, uh, you know, if you want to save the BKB for the agents or anything, so. Radiant's top tower. They're just waiting for the moment. Scanning. Oh, they have spider legs. Toby has the life stealer inside. Ready to jump if they find an opening there. Iceberg gets the jump already to start, but Toby found the witch doctor. Always want to fly is dead. Can they burn through this Aegis in time? Who will fall? That's something at least to start this. So a one for one exchange. So they have eggs coil. The Aegis. Oh, Radiant's top tower go for it. is under attack. Yeah, a little bit too afraid. Ah, uh, it's so tempting because you have the BKB Sven and the Axe Coil and you know that they're going to go for that cookie, but they have such good vision there that I think that would have been a pretty bad fight for Navi to take, so they're just going to have to let them get out and... Except they lost their tier 3, but no Rex, so their economy game won't be wrecked by the, the Super Creeps. No. And they're going to head back out and do what they do best. Hit neutrals. <laughs> the class. Yeah, Sven Diablo returns. 
I'm coming. This familiar for you guys. stomping grounds. <laughs> you thought you were thought safe? Gone. <laughs> you think I was gonna defend my ancient? <laughs> God, look at they have uh, they have glyph. Okay. Dyer's bottom see barracks it. are under attack. Viking, just Dyer's easy as pie. Makes this little move on over. And Night Stalker ready to go in with that BKB. Still 10 seconds. I mean, I think that the switch over and putting the cheese on boom is maybe what they, why they decide to back, but General's gonna try and find this back line there. Gets the break of the blink on Toby. They have the amp damage on him though, and Stun comes out on the boom. They're gonna try and turn and get this one. They've caught the night. Oh, and cheese. You blow up the shadow feed. He can get the cheese off. Silence is coming out now onto the life zone. Trying to bring him down in time. Is it gonna be enough? Oh, but look at the mortar books get this. So much damage being dealt. They take down the spin. Toby standing tall in the midst of all of this. And man, it's already do a ton of damage there. But Sven's their only loss, but looks of it. And they actually managed to get those kills impressively enough after they lost the two big dogs of the uh, Life Stealer and the Shadow Fiend. So impressive stuff there. Uh, kind of from both sides to at least get a little bit of cleanup. Oh, General, don't be another victim here. It's your danger. He oh, he's got friends. Down. Okay. Breaking the blink dagger, the silence comes on out. Ooh, there's the cookie away though. Yeah. And now looking towards the willow. Fuel Scepter comes out, but they should be able to get air. Oh my god, General. Just gotta be very careful. Toby's there. The crush to turn back around. They got him. Meanwhile, the phase shift still living for the moment. The spider legs away. They did get the kill onto air. All the, the feeds. The Chain feed. Mr. Toby, most likely. I mean, he does a ton of damage here. It's the BKB backup. Turns, tries to beat down. Oh, the also flies his TPs. Run away. <laughs> I was watching for the cooldown on Death Ward. It was coming back up, and there was like, nope, nope. We do not want to be the chain feeders after all of that. So, how, how is this a hero? How, how is this acceptable? Well, Look he's coming back. Monster. Look at this guy. How is this allowed? God damn, Toby. Give him a break. Stay away from the river, man. The monster's going to get you. Jeez. Oh, we need a Loch Ness skin. I like that. When he goes underwater, just like his head pops out. Yeah, a little Nessie. I'm good. Maybe it I changes his voiceover. <laughs> Gives him a Scottish accent. <laughs> is it just Dark Willow or is it Luna? We're not even sure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Iceberg's opting for the Scythe next. Uh, obviously, BKB first item on the Shadow Fiend, plus it's a versus a Life Sealer. So, and he did indeed get the BKB, so we're just trying to uh, catch all three of these cores with their BKBs. I like that decision. Um, yeah. I was thinking like in that push down bottom, it's sort of, you were talking about the danger of that first stun uh, and like whether or not you pop the BKB. It's like, this just forces it. You're not going to be able to. Yeah. Um, I think that you can, I don't know. He's going to have Satanic on Shadow Fiend. I'm not sure if they can kill in the duration of a Hex and a Storm Hammer. Be a to see. Are scanning. I think they're sort of resigning themselves to the next Aegis again. Yeah. Of course, they still have cheese, so they could have another go if they'd like. Mm -hmm. Well, any other big item pickups that we've got coming out soon? Well, so far, things still feel fairly in Viking's hands. I think uh, going high ground is tough because of the uh, the possibility of just the coil into Sven and the, the monstrous amount of damage that uh, he's going to have. But I think the Abyssal is an interesting choice just because there is so many BKBs that V2 doesn't have to rely on the Agonims. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I think that... Unfortunately, it'll be a while. Right. Well, and also, I'm, I'm not sure how much this Orchid really like increases your damage potential. I guess a good amount, but it, it feels a little bit weird, right? When you got this big hulking right clicker, just sort of hanging on to an orchid. Um, yeah, it's but. a little awkward when it's just like, you know, you purchase this to uh, to essentially force a DKB on the uh, the life stealer. Right. Because you probably could have gotten by without it before. So it's, uh, it's all right in the end, I think. Yeah. Well. 9,000 uh, gold lead as Toby walks up the hill. Boy's gonna fly. Doesn't really have another answer besides just dying and buys back immediately. Wait a minute. They're gonna pop 
Awesome. Right on the FF. Gets the stun. Good amount of damage. Oh, the cookie, though. That might have bought him enough time. And now B2 has to run away. Oh, my God. Look at the damage coming in onto this fend, but the relocate pulls them away. Barely able to get out of there. Well, the lift up comes onto General. He's got to run out of here as well. Bought back on the snap fire. So far, both supports dead. The Dark Willow going to see if they can chase down and get any extra damage onto General. They've killed Roger as he came back in. But it looks like General will escape. So death and buyback of the Snapfire, and then uh, two kills on the supports of Navi with another buyback over there as well. So another game for Viking here as they march up the high ground and want to plant their flag of destroying Arax. Okay. So they will get this one rather rapid. Oh, what? Okay, that's fine. Nobody <laughs> noticed the early glyph. It's okay. Yeah, it's all right. So that is going to be tier three used. Silence on the two has coil afterwards. They want to make this play, but this is going to be a second Rax now. As Witch Doctor not up for 14. Dyer's middle barracks has fallen. And they're just going to let that one go. Felt a little too easy for Viking, but uh, yeah, they don't want to make their game deciding fight when they're down two heroes. So. Uh, another minute until the Roshi was a relatively long one this time, which will end up benefiting Navi. Well, I guess maybe it was instant. There could have been something there for them when they were actually able to get outside on the map. For now, it would appear they're not quite sure of the status of Roche. They actually scan in. They caught someone for a second, but now it's empty, so... Oh, and then it stayed red the whole rest of the way. So they might think they're in Roche now because of that. Yeah, this is a, a dangerous moment here. And General is up on the top side, doesn't have ulti for another 15 seconds. And it just does hit Knight right now, though. So he'll be able to get back to the rest of his team pretty quickly. Toby will get to that opening and they find him. BKB used, but they found the IO! Right at the start, and BKBs come out abound. Terrorized afterwards, it's not going to be enough. The BKBs were still going. With Sven dead for 70 seconds, I think Viking might have done it. Yep. GG. Wow. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. You know, the whole turnaround started with the tip on the iceberg. Well, the tip from iceberg, rather. Dude, that's what this is about. Is that, is that, yep. That's, that's the only reason they won. Okay. And they had no other uh, reason for it. So, uh, no, not that it's playoffs or anything like that. Excellent game for Viking GG. The tried and true strategy of playing Dota. They just play Dota. That's what they do.